What is funny? Heels on the line. Heels on the line. Heels on the line. Do not get that close to me. Heels on the line. Heels on the line. Go. On a blistering Saturday in August, 759 new freshmen, or knobs, arrived at the Citadel in Charleston, South Carolina for matriculation day. Yeah. A few weeks later, only 683 would remain. Oh, oh, the atmosphere created by Citadel cadets is described as artificial stress. Go, get out of my face. And the tone is set immediately upon stepping into the barracks. Sea wind, right? Your sea wind. Find your name. Find your name. Find your name. Find your name. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? But 76 students, about 10% of the knobs who show up on day one, won't be here for more than a few weeks before walking away from the school. Citadel freshmen are referred to as knobs because of the resemblance their freshly shaved heads share with a doorknob. It's one of the first steps on their journey toward joining the South Carolina Corps of Cadets at one of the nation's oldest military colleges. Matriculation day kicks off a seven month period known as Knob Year. A time filled with rigorous physical and mental challenges, finally ending with recognition day the following March, when the knobs officially become cadets. The mission of the Citadel is to educate and develop cadets to become principal leaders. Citadel cadets are not obligated to serve in the armed forces after graduation, and only about a third join the military ranks. So why do these young people choose this for their college experience? Why did you choose the Citadel? I chose the Citadel because I wanted to challenge myself. It will push me past what I thought were my limits. I knew that if I went to a different school, I'd probably like slack off and not do what I was supposed to do. I really enjoy military and structure. For some people, especially like myself, it's easier, you know, if people are telling you what to do, when to do it, and like how to do it. Um, my name is Hirifumi Matsuda. Um, I'm from California. So why are you at the Citadel? Oh, um, so it's my dream to come to the East Coast to, uh, for the college and also I wanted to join the Army um, for a long time, so it was a great opportunity to come here. Ma'am, when that golf cart driver comes to pick you up, hand him that blue card, please. So I saw your mom. What was it like saying goodbye to her? Oh, uh, we had just a frank goodbye and um, my mom was like, I'm worried about you, but you got it. And, Come on, Today, about 25% of Citadel cadets are from underrepresented groups, a percentage that's continued to grow since the school racially integrated in 1966. But as some of the school's characteristics appear to evolve, others remain rooted in its past. One the school itself acknowledges has deep ties to slavery and the Confederacy. This placard honoring the Confederate General Robert E. Lee remains in the barracks. A Confederate flag hangs in the Citadel's chapel, protected by South Carolina's Heritage Act, despite protests from school officials and alumni. And for decades, the school has been scrutinized because of allegations of racism, sexism, and hazing. Racism, misogyny, discrimination of any kind is completely incompatible with our core values of honor, duty and respect. And the sanction for hazing is expulsion. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? We went inside day one for the new knob class. Do you need water? Sir, no, sir. While the Citadel continues to wrestle with its past, we saw some cadets trying, in real time, to change its future. Morning, ma'am. Welcome to the Citadel. Can I have your cadet recruits ID, please? Can we be headed to 3rd Battalion? We'll go right there and hang a right. Morning, sir. Welcome to the Citadel. Each knob is assigned to a company. And after checking in, they head to their new home, the barracks. Hurry up, stop lollygagging. Don't take forever. Stop right here. Face straight ahead. See that clerk over there? Yes, sir. You will say, you'll say, ma'am, yes, ma'am, or ma'am, no, ma'am, when addressing her. Put your heels and toes together like this. Heel, toes apart at 45 degree angle, as I was. You will go up to her and you will address her as ma'am, yes, ma'am, or ma'am, no, ma'am. Do you understand? Yes, sir. When addressing a male cadet, you will say, sir, yes, sir, or so, no, sir. Do you understand? Sir, yes, sir. Go. Hurry up. Walk faster. They're met and instructed by upperclassmen, like sophomore cadet John Morton, who only a year ago was just beginning his knob year. Are you glad you're on the other side of this after last year? Absolutely, sir. It's a whole new experience and it feels really nice. It definitely, like, opens your eyes up to more of how this place works. 
Stop right here in the center of the square. Let's go. Come on, move. You're standing in position of attention. Hands by your side, heels together, toes at a 45 degree angle. You're good. I'm going to send you that clerk right over there. You're going to do everything she tells you to do. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Go. So it's a whole new experience, and it it's definitely, I want to say better, but it's also more challenging because it has its own requirements to it and its own, you know, trials. Come on, hurry up. Let's go. That is your key. Do not leave this table without it. Take a black pen, fill in the columns to the right of your name. Go. What is matriculation and what's happening here at the Citadel today? So today the knobs or cadet recruits are coming in for the very first time. They're getting checked in. They're moving all the things that they have up to their room and it's basically just the introduction day to the system. Button your polo up. What company are you? Alpha Man, Alpha, man, there's no two word answers here anymore, all right? What company are you? Delta Company, ma'am. Ma'am, Delta, ma'am. Ma'am, Delta, ma'am. Go. Yes, ma'am. Showed up in slides. Put your heels together, 45 degree angle, right? What company are you? Maybe not, Tony. Totally. Go back. Showing up in slides is not. No, <laughs> you're supposed to show up in sneakers. So, you were in their shoes last year. Yep. I, I nobbed in Charlie Company, so. What's it like being on this side? It's interesting. It's very polarizing because I can exactly feel the exact same of dread that they had today. But now I'm on the opposing end causing that dread, if that makes sense. So. Walk faster. What company are you? Alpha. Ma'am, Alpha, ma'am. You're not going to say one word answers anymore. Are you all right? Ma'am, yes, ma'am. Go. Nope. Do you ev will you ever get that close to me? Heels on the line. You're like kind of the first or second person they see. Like, what's your sort of goal here uh, with the way you talk to them and everything? Intentionally, I mean, the school causes conditioned stress in a sense. So, like, you want them to introduce them to that system already and kind of, like, we're introducing them to, like, ma'am sandwiching, sir sandwiching, so that way they, they know how to correctly address the upperclassmen um, and create a sense of, like, how to walk in this battalion, how to do what to do. But heels on the line. What company are you? Bravo. Ma'am, bravo, ma'am. Go. But in a sense, um, we call it artificial stress. But I mean, they do feel real stress, but it's it's in a, in a set environment, if that makes sense. So. Look straight ahead. I'm going to send you that female clerk right over there. You'll say, ma'am, yes, ma'am, or ma'am, no, ma'am, when addressing her. Do you understand? Yes, sir. For over 150 years, the Citadel was male only. Females weren't able to matriculate until 1995. The first female student, Shannon Faulkner, quit after only one week at the college, a decision that was openly celebrated by some male cadets. The first female cadet to graduate from the Citadel was Nancy Mace, who got her diploma in 1999. She now serves as a Republican Congresswoman representing South Carolina. Over there, go, move. Today, about 13% of Citadel cadets are female. You checked in at the wrong table, right? Yes, for sure. All right, write 1460 in marker on the back of your hand. As a female cadet, do you feel like this is a safe and inclusive place? I do. When I was a knob, my upperclassmen were extremely pro professional. If a certain situation felt like it needed specific attention, then maybe a female upperclassman was called over to deal with it or something like that. There's definitely a lot of training that goes on with the cadre and the leadership. Everyone should be treated equally, but at the same time, there's a whole lot of difference when it comes to the females and males and the fact that there's so much less of us. To me, you're a cadet. If I go to my female knobs, and I tell them what I expect of them, exactly the same as the males, there's no question there that everyone's a cadet. If I were to change the standards, or if my leadership were to change the standards, we would only be making it worse. We would only be separating them more. So I try to stay away from that. Get back. Stop smiling. Stop it. Do you know where you're at, son? You're at the Citadel, at the Military College of South Carolina, the hardest military academy in the in nation. You understand? No place for jokes. Find your name on this sheet. I do not have all day with you, Gaskins. Find it. Find it right now. Find it right now. Look. Look through. Look through. Gaskins. Find your name. Find your name. 1418. 1418. Find your name. Find your name. Find your name. Find your name. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Sign right here. Sign right here. Get your pin. Sign right there. See wit. See wit. See wit. Put your see wit. Sign your name. Put all 12. The knobs report to their company's first sergeant. Write it. Write it. Write it. Write it. Stop wondering. Just write it. Who confiscates their cell phones, gives them their room keys, and sends them on their way.
Here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go to that table over there. You can grab everything they issue you at that table. Then you're gonna go to your room, drop that off. Go to your car. Then from your car, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go from your car up to your room, changing the Citadel PTs and wait for further instruction. Do you understand? Yes, first sergeant. Fly away. At this point, we're giving a certain amount of artificial stress to them. Just so they can get that shock and awe factor. We'll get them in their rooms, get them to lunch. We'll have a uh, rough day, but a good one. Do you remember two years ago what it was like for you to be on the other side of the table? It was terrifying. But I would, would not be the same person if it was not for this school. While this process can be tough and challenging and grueling, it's really necessary for these kids. I mean, I've seen people come through here who I thought would never make it, maybe at first glance, end up being the biggest studs in their company. Don't look at me. Okay. Glance in your eyes over here. What size are you? Medium. Sir, sir. sir medium, yes, sir. sir. Whenever you're ready. I think that haircut actually might make you look better. Open this up. That is disgusting. Upperclassmen issue PT or physical training uniforms to the knobs. You can put this in there when you're ready. Sir, yes, sir. Sir, thank you, sir. I'm not your friend. Do you not say thank you to me. Excited for your haircut today? Sir, yes, sir. I sure am. Open that up. Sir, yes, sir. I think you might be one to be a motivational speaker the way you freaking sound off. You motivate me. Did you forget your belt this morning? Yes, sir. Man. Don't look at it. Did I say grab it? Yes, sir. How about you grab it now? Sir, yes, sir, right? Sir, yes, sir. Man, you got this figured out. So, what kind of dynamic are you trying to create here? Trying to, like, introduce them to the system. You kind of, like, you want to razzle them a little bit so they're under that stress now, so they actually can perform. And they're under, like, a lot of stress. They actually have somewhat of a, you know, they're still, like, I guess, able to think a little bit. Where are you looking? They have no idea what's like what's right, so just tell them like what they're doing wrong, and hopefully they you know learn how to fix it. To the Citadel, famed military college in Charleston, South Carolina, go sons of the South's first families. In this West Point of Dixie, the young gentleman is raised in the traditions of his forefathers. According to the Citadel's own website, the college was founded in 1842 to defend the city of Charleston against a potential slave insurrection. Slaves, in fact, labored at the Citadel, where during the 19th century, some cadets and faculty members reportedly owned slaves as well. It's widely believed that the first shot in the American Civil War was fired by a Citadel graduate fighting for the South during the Battle of Fort Sumter in 1861. More than a century later, the first black cadet matriculated at the Citadel in 1966. A former Citadel cadet has sued the school, hazing, beatings, and repeated trips to the hospital. For decades, the school has been plagued by allegations of racism and hazing. In January of 2023, Charleston newspaper The Post and Courier published a story citing conversations with three dozen current and former Citadel cadets and employees who described instances of cadets using the N-word and hanging racist effigies, along with a football coach who used the word monkey to describe a black player. According to The Citadel, about 7% of cadets identify as black, and about 18% identify as part of other underrepresented groups. We're still working to get uh, the number of underrepresented students here where we want it. Um, that number has increased significantly since I was a cadet. You wear the ring. I do. The Citadel's Chief Inclusive Excellence Officer, Robert Pickering, graduated from the college in 1994. Would you say that the Citadel is an inclusive place? I would say that it is, uh, and I'm speaking from somebody who had that experience as a cadet and who's worked here for 28 years. I see that every year we're moving closer and closer to get to where we want to be in terms of inclusive excellence. What was your experience as a black man mm -hmm. at the Citadel in 1990 in, uh, through that lens? Yes, yes. So not many African-American students on campus, so we we're a close-knit group. Uh, we needed that bond. I was fortunate enough to, to grow up here in Charleston. My father told me who Charles Foster was, so I knew who the first African-American graduate was when I was a cadet. And in my mind, I'd say, well, if Charles Foster can make it, you know, coming here in 1966, I can definitely make it coming here in 1990. And uh, having been here now for uh, quite a while, I have the ability now to, to mentor and support students as they come through as well. Battalion, receive the report. Today, a new generation of black cadets serve as leaders in the Corps. 
So being here as an African-American student is just like any other cadet, um, you know, it, it is a shock, shock at first, you know, I, I'm coming to a predominantly white school. Um, but I think it is very, very important that we get more cadets on campus to expose our diversity. Don't think that, you know, you're going to come here and going to get harassed or going to get bothered with. Just about everybody here is, you know, everybody here is, we're, we're a family, at least, you know, we, we try to form those families and those bonds. There's always people here to support you. Have a seat. Somebody move your move. Should I be standing up? Oh, yeah, you still do. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Keep going, keep going, keep going. All right, why is he coming? For a challenge, sir. For a challenge. Okay, cool. Go through your uh, door. How'd you pull this gig? Uh, I just got randomly selected, sir. Yep. <laughs> what are you doing exactly? Uh, I'm just swiping the knobs heads down, and then as I do that, I sort of just ask them why they came here. Sort of, some knobs don't even know the reason why they come here. I kind of want to give them an opportunity to sort of tell me that, so they can sort of ask themselves that, you know, and then they can reinforce that in their head, so they can continue on. Breeze, what's in there? Uh, just sea breeze. <laughs> Yeah. From what I remember, this kind of stings a little bit, so, yeah. All right, go to the org, okay. Okay. Hey, what up? What language were you speaking? That was Japanese. You know, uh, I can speak a little bit of Japanese, so I just wanted to, you know, show that there's sort of like cultural here. You know, it's pretty cool. <laughs> I kind of just guessed he was Japanese though, so, yeah. You think that probably gave him some comfort? Definitely. I know I have a South Korean uh, knob in my company, and I definitely feel like, you know, there's, there's Asian culture in the company. You know, it's better to show them that, make them feel more at home, so, definitely. What did that mean to you to have someone speak to you in Japanese here at the Citadel? Well, um, it kind of break my nerve because um, it's a familiar language that I speak with my family. I feel very safe and I'm um, familiar. So does that make you feel better? Yes, sir. Great. All right. Thank you so much for your time and good luck to you. Thank you. All right. Core values, pop up. Sir, sir the Citadel's core values are honor, duty, and respect. Sir, again. Sir, sir, the Citadel's core values are honor, duty, and respect. Sir, sir. According to the Citadel, Matsuda is no longer enrolled at the school and it wouldn't offer any further explanation as to why he left. He's one of 76 knobs who showed up for matriculation day, but have since left. Sometimes you may think you may want something or like something and then realize that it's just not your passion. Sometimes we feel like quitting, everybody has those days, but the thing we like to refer to is our why. Uh, we want people to remember that why. Why did you come here? You came here for a reason and you are here for that. Remember that when you feel like you're going to quit, whether that be family, whether that be your future. Usually the people that don't tend to finish out, they just find their other passions in life. Do you need socks? Sir, no, sir. You sure? Sir, yes, sir. Go to the corner of the room. Step up. The knobs head to the cadet store to pick up the different uniforms they'll need for the school year. 23 and a half. Seven five eight. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Sir, good afternoon, sir. You got me? Sir, good afternoon. Can you come sir. here and step right here, please? That's where we saw one upperclassman who was addressing the knobs in a manner we had not yet seen. How are you? Sir, good, sir. Are you sure? Sir, yes, sir. Is it hot? <laughs> sir, yes, sir. Do you need water? Sir, no, sir. How you doing? Sir, this guy's doing great, sir. Great. I like your hair. Thank you. Yes, yes, sir. Oh my lord, it's hot. Are you hot? Are you bald? Sir, yes, sir. All right, don't smile when you get in there. Yeah, you got hair all over your face. You got more hair hands. on your face than your head right now. Permission to touch? Sure, yes, sir. All right. You'll be okay, man. Get in there. 
So you're you're being uh, kind of particularly kind to them as they come in. Yes, sir. Why is that? It's just who I am. I didn't have a good experience with my knob here, so it's just like if I get to change the, the environment and the climate, which is what we really learned during our uh, preparation for this week, it's, it's it'll help. It's the ex expectation that um, if I get hazed or if something happens, I'll walk 100 tours, which I did, is that the expectation is that I'm gonna do that to someone else, right? And so that's not who I am. That's not how I was raised, it's not what I grew up with. So it's just always, always gonna be kind and respectful to everybody, no matter what age you are. Like my best friend was a knob last year and it's, it's just unfair to me, you know? Right. So yes, are they about to have a, a tough few days? Yes, sir. I'll be there for them. For these knobs, with matriculation day behind them, they've taken their first step in the grueling journey they must endure before officially joining the Corps of Cadets.